Before we go get into a PCF for a cloud, I just wanted to tell you how it was, uh, you know, early 2000s uh, when, you know, the open systems like Java JTE started penetrating into the market. So typically, any web applications, uh, as you fully aware, we have a client browser. From client browser, you know, it will go to the load balancer to the firewall, where load balancer firewall are typically to uh, route the request firewall is meant to see whether any uh, you know, anonymous code is anonymous requests are committed to the system. Firewall typically eliminate any kind of uh, you know hackers or uh, issues in the system. Then it will go to HTTP product, HTTP uh, web server, then the cache server, then the application. Again, a firewall to the database. Uh, to do this entire setup, early 2000s. It used to take close to a year time for us because we have to procure. When I say we have to procure, we have to buy load balancers, we have to buy buy firewalls, web servers, cache servers, application servers, and finally the gateways. You know, if you are a middleware guy, uh, you you have to buy an MQ server, MQ server uh, related infrastructure. Like you need to decide whether you need to have a 8 GB RAM, 4 CPU box, and you know how it is connected to upstreams and downstreams, so on and so forth, right? So, yeah. so to right now, if you see the current market is how quickly we can move our application to production so that it is it is easily accessible to the entire world. So they wanted to eliminate the duration that it is taking to migrate an application from in a development environment to a production environment. This is a typical production architecture where we usually spend close to six to eight months only to set this up in the production environment. So the speed to market is not happening. The speed to market is how quickly you can show it to the customers and get benefit out of it. Let's say that you have a product, you wanted to sell it in the market and grab another profit out of it. So to eliminate this problem, this is the first problem why they are coming into the cloud architecture. The second problem is, let's say that here, if you see we have one, two, three web servers, we have three you know, cache servers and three application servers. Uh, assume that uh, you are like an Amazon. I mean, Amazon is now pretty famous, but uh, if you see uh, Amazon will have uh, highest volumes during your Christmas season or a Thanksgiving season, where because you'll have a lot of uh, you know orders from various customers. So, on the contrary to it, take the time period of March or April, where Amazon may not have the similar volumes of requests from customers, may not have similar orders from customers. So, what is happening is the this application uh, servers may not be fully utilized. Uh, during the Christmas time, they may be at 90% utilization, whereas during non-peak season, their utilization could be 60 to 70%. So in the world, what we, uh, what, what, what the infrastructure observed is 60 to 70% of the infrastructure may not be the effectively utilized across the year. So they wanted to see how best and what best can be done to, to fully leverage the infrastructure capability. So considering these two points, what they have done is they wanted to migrate to a better environment. They wanted to migrate to a better infrastructure where the utilization can be up to 90% at any point of time. Uh, okay. Any questions here or, you know, I can take it up and then I'll, I'll start the next point. No, I'm good. So, so these two points made the way to create a cloud architecture, a cloud infrastructure. So what is happening is some companies may not have enough money to 
deploy all this uh, all this infrastructure for us so so they wanted to rent it out they wanted to leverage based on their need so so companies like pcf or aws or microsoft azure they have come up with an architecture called you know uh, cloud architecture where you can leverage the infrastructure based on your need you don't need to buy the infrastructure all you need to do is pay it when you want it or use it when you want it so this is the typical reason why we are moving from a physical architecture to a cloud based architecture where you can order an instance like let's say that you want to order an application server the application server will be available within a minute of time whereas in the old legacy system the application server you had to buy an uh, you had to buy a cpu you have to buy a ram you have to buy a hard disk and then you had to coordinate with oracle uh, to get the web logic server if you are a middleware guy you have to connect with ibm to mq server and it's licensing then installs on and so forth so this entire process now it is taken care by the cloud people so if you go to uh, pivotal cloud foundry uh, these are the typical, you know, uh, uh, topics that we will be covering in the entire session. So we wanted to give you what are the physical server architecture and the challenges, how virtualization and cloud computing has been started, the pros and cons of the cloud, different types of cloud, uh, and you know different services. Then we will slowly dive into the PCF overview, what is meant by total cloud foundry. PCF cloud account creation, how to create your own account because the infrastructure is located somewhere else. Uh, in, in cloud, there are three different uh, types of uh, you know services that are available. One is a public cloud, second one is you know private cloud, third one is kind of a hybrid cloud. So what is the difference between a public cloud versus a private cloud versus a hybrid cloud? And then we discuss about like the way you said how to create apps how to create spaces how to create domains and how to create routers uh, you know how to map them to your uh, you know pcf uh, and you know how to deploy these applications in the r arg is nothing but let's say that you know you have a company called x x will have uh, uh, x will have uh, i would say uh, uh, finance organization x will have hr organization it, uh, X company will have, uh, you know, uh, service organization. So what we do is we will create an org for each and every unit or module within your company so that they are working in that particular. Way. So that's where we, we come to talk about spaces, domains, and routers. Then we will talk about uh, how to, add. most of the people are familiar with command line interface. So how to access PCF using the command line interface, then how to, if you are an administrator, how to create users, how to provide an access, how to create roles in the PCF world. And then uh, we take you to how to do deployment in the, in, in the, the PCF cloud, how to monitor whether the application is behaving as expected. App manager is nothing but a health check. Uh, once you deploy your application to the cloud platform, is my application health is good? Like what is the CPU utilization? What is the memory utilization? How many requests it is serving? So on and so forth. So we talk about app app manager is typically monitoring your application performance, monitoring your PCF performance on a cloud environment. How to create a build packs and manifest of health. This is more of an admin admin related activities where the build pack is build pack is nothing but your uh, you know your compiled package how to put it in a <clears throat> how, how to put it in a safe location so that the same build pack can be used later then <clears throat> we will take you to the integral part of uh, pcf architecture like you know uh, how pcf is managing internally its own infrastructure to give the best resources to the applications to best resources to various you know spaces and organizations that have been created uh, this is uh, the point point from uh, uh, CLA overview to architecture is predominantly keeping the developer uh, keeping the administrator 
in point of view. If you are a developer, we will talk more from the PCF development. Like you know, PCF development is uh, more like integrated with uh, with uh, uh, Spring and Spring framework. How to develop a small application by using Spring and Spring work? What are the different principles that need to be followed? Uh, the 12 factors to develop an application using a PCF. And then uh, if, again, uh, if you are a developer or an administrator, how to use auto scaling? Let's say that uh, you know uh, your servers are now at 80 or 90 percent utilization. You know that uh, if if 100 more requests come to your server. Your server may crash. How to how to ensure that my PCF automatically understand the thread and increase its capacity? That is called auto scaling. So what happens in auto scaling is the moment you set uh, triggers, like let's say that uh, once we touch 80% CPU utilization, once we touch uh, say 60% or 70% of memory utilization. We, we are going to instruct PCF, hey, add one more instance, add one more server to my application so that so that my application will be horizontally scaled or vertically scaled so that any request can be uh, can be served by that by your application without any delay. So how to do auto scaling both horizontally and vertically, that's what we're going to do. And how to uh, ensure that your services are binding this is predominantly for your upstreams and downstream applications. Uh, what are the different operations we have in in, in the Cloud Foundry? What are the things that we can do from the command prompt, so on and so forth? This is this particular course covers both from the development perspective and also from from the admin perspective. This is typically more on the more on the course content. What we usually do. Uh, I'll pass here because you are the only guy, and uh, I wanted to see what is your expectations, and if you have any questions, you can start from there. Yeah, so I don't have much question, but you know, basically, I'm looking for more on administration side. So you said uh, we are going to cover both admin and development, right? So I think, right. uh, yeah, yeah, I think um, I'm good for this, and I'm good right. for that. Right. So. Uh, so if, if you see this presentation, uh, so so this is how you know. So because if, if I think you your voice is breaking, I don't know. My side, I also had problem. Is it clear now? Hello. 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 Are you able to hear me? Hello. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm okay. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, I'm able to hear you. Yes. Right. So uh, most of the times uh, in the cloud uh, architecture and infrastructure point of view, we wanted to ensure that our application reliable at 99.99%. So we will we will describe how cloud computing is ensuring that your application is available 99.99%. So one of the advantages of the cloud uh, platform is, let's say that you are using not a cloud platform, but you, let's say that you are using a standalone server, a standalone physical server that is located, like like your laptop or a you know or a general PC. It is difficult for us to give 99.99 reliability at any point of time because if a power shutdown happens, if you were, if there is a high CPU utilization or a high memory utilization, your application or your box may get down. So it is difficult for us to give 99.99 percentage reliability at any point of time to the end users. So what will cloud computing will do is the moment cloud computing observes that your application is your underlying infrastructure of your application is going beyond certain limits. It automatically adds more and more instances. So this is a key point for a cloud infrastructure or a cloud computing technology is to ensure that your application is available 99.99 percentage at any point of time. So these are the various pros and cons. Uh, the pros is 24/7 availability and reliability, uh, scalability no time earlier. Uh, if you go back to early 2000s. 
you need to add physical servers one by one. So altering a physical server, getting a physical server, adding it to it will take more time. It is cost effective. Earlier you buy and keep it in your you know, data center, even if you don't use it. Now with the cloud computing, you don't need to worry about it. You can pay based on your usage. Uh, the moment you see that your application, uh, you know, servers, there are five servers, but effectively are using three servers. You can very well tell PCF or you can very well tell Azure or you can very well tell AWS that, hey, I don't need five instances. I just need three instances because I'm good. So you end up paying only for three instances. Uh, excellent accessibility and high you know, speed. The disadvantages we have with the cloud is vulnerability to attack because if it is a private cloud, it will be in your control. If you are using a public cloud, uh, the security has to be uh, managed and maintained by the third party. If you, in the PCF world, it is a PCF. In the Azure and AWS world, it's a Microsoft and Amazon has to take care of it. If any downtime happens, it will not be in your control. It is in the you know, vendor control, be it uh, Microsoft or Azure, or Microsoft or Amazon or a PCF control. Uh, as an administrator, if it is a public cloud, you may end up having a limited control. And because you are connecting to a different uh, data center from your work area, sometimes network play by the way. So I'll quickly take you to uh, the PCF screen. This is this is how Pivotal Clone Font Re uh, uh, in the login screen appears for you. I already logged in with my credentials. Uh, this is a trial account. We don't have a permanent account, but with a trial account. You would be able to do whatever you know you can uh, be like an administrator or a developer so you need to access pivotal web services that's where your uh, you know organizations and everything can be stored so we are logging into the console So if you see uh, already created base box and spaces uh, here, I have created my space is development, my space is U8, and uh, my space is test. You can do, you can create an arc by using create arc here. In case uh, you're in, most of the times if you're an administrator, uh, as I, as I told you, uh, a, a company may have HR domain, a company may have uh, you know, uh, services domain, the company may have finance domain. So the company may ask you, hey, why don't you create an organization for HR, an organization for, uh, you know, finance, an organization for accounting. So as a developer, there are two options for you to create an organization. One, by using the web console. This is called Pivotal Web, web Console by simply creating a quick arc. A second one is by using command line utility. I'll, I'll, I'll also take you to the command line utility. So here, what you need to do as an administrator is, first of all, you need to sit with the business, you need to sit with the company and define the structure of your cloud platform, the architecture of your cloud platform. Like the way I said, if you see here, I have created two arcs, one for Sri Vipath, and second one is Vipath Finance. What happens is, if you are dealing with HR applications or if you are dealing with the finance applications, all finance applications will be falling under finance arc of your company. Similarly, if you are dealing with HR applications, all HR applications will be falling under HR arc. Similarly, if you are dealing with accounting department, all accounting applications will be sitting under accounting. So what we are doing is, we are dividing your company structure into small small organization so that we are ensuring that each organization is mutually exclusive to other one and all the based on the domain or based on the services that the organization is giving you are restricting its space to that particular organization only if you see here i have created a vpath an organization called sri vpath in which I'll create a development environment, in which I can create test environment, 
and also create a new water one. So the space you call it as a development space, the space you call it as a UI space and the test space. You can do start and stop from here. Uh, you can say that two instances. When I do, when I say two instances, this development has two CPUs. Two, when I say two instances, let's assume that each instance is a 6 GB RAM and four CPU box. So it has two 6 GB RAM, two, uh, two four CPU boxes, uh, you know, that are created for this development. So being administrator, we will tell you how to create uh, an organization for you. If you go inside, you'll get all the details, like what are the services it is currently running, different routers that it has. So you can also do, you can start the server, So there are no uh, there are no routers available right right now. Router is nothing but a load balancer type. Whenever the request is come first, we will go to the router. Router will see which instance is currently less utilized. If you if you go back to uh, your development area, there are two instances, two G RAM, two GB RAM. Uh, these are the two instances available. If you go to router. Router is more like an act, acts as a load balancer. When the user request comes to the router, router will see which which CPU or which instance is currently less utilized. The router will do uh, the load balancing activity to identify which instance out of these two is less utilized and send the request to it. So this is how we are ensuring that your requests are mapped based on the instance usage. If you have two instances, which instances is 70% or 80%, let's say that you have one instance at 90% utilization, other instances 70% utilization, your router will ensure that your new request is going to the 70% instance so that it is doing a proper load balancing and it is also ensuring that it has a proper CPU and memory utilization across these two instances. Uh, this is typically creating org spaces and you know some kind of services. Uh, we also describe how to set up environment variables from the command line utility. We can also do there is a marketplace here. Marketplace is like your you know uh, any any kind of uh, uh, you know if you, if you go to your Android marketplace or if you go to your iPhone, there is an Apple App Store. Here are various services available. Let's say BlazeMaker is a performance system tool. Uh, App Autoscaler is, it will scale bound applications it wants to load. Like, like the way I said, you can auto scale your uh, instances by, by integrating this App Autoscaler as well to your instance. Uh, here you can configure what is your auto scaling uh, parameters, like at what level of CPU, at what level of memory, this auto scale has to be done. Similarly, uh, if you if you wanted to use ClearDB, you can integrate this service to your uh, to your pivotal uh, service pivotal platform instances. Similarly, if you are uh, if you are MQ series guy, there is a there is a free uh, service called RabbitMQ. How to integrate RabbitMQ to your PCF instance so that you can do exactly what you are currently doing in IBM MQ. With the RabbitMQ as well, MQ is also a messaging service. RabbitMQ is a open MQ uh, messaging service. I'll pass here to see any questions from you. Yeah, so when you say uh, this routing concept, right? So in the development, um, we can create like a number of services, and we can create a number of routers, or each um, path, uh, our application have only one router. We usually map each application to one router because let's say that uh, your application has four instances. Uh -huh. uh, and we will keep only one router in front of your four instances. What happens is when the user request comes, this router, this router is connected to these four instances and, and decide which instance is currently less occupied and router will route the request to the appropriate instance. So for a particular application, we have only one router at any point of time. The application can have four or five instances. 
okay so it, it's like a load balancer let's take an example uh, yeah. you get into a target or a walmart store and sometimes uh, you see uh, executive standing at the door mm -hmm. so the executive will ask you hey or well, what do you want uh, then you'll say that hey uh, i wanted to buy uh, you know, some machine related stuff then the walmart executive tell you go to fourth floor and if you say that i wanted to buy vegetables fruits uh, the executive will tell you go to second floor or if you say that i wanted to buy uh, some grocery items or go to the floor too the executive acts as a load balancer so you are a requester getting into walmart you are obstructed by by a load balancer or you are obstructed by an executive the executive is telling you which floor to go to access your data. similarly when the request comes to router router acts like an executive in front of walmart and says that which instance to go to get your in, uh, to get the response what you wanted from the from the application server okay and then if you are familiar with india if you go to uh, any uh, you know shopping mall here or if you go to uh, the, at the beginning they will ask you or if you go to any jewelry shop at the beginning they will ask you hey, are you looking for a diamond are you looking for a gold ornament or are you looking for a silver ornament the executive who is standing at the gate will guide you based on your desired uh, you know uh, ornament be it a gold diamond or a silver okay mm -hmm. yeah but um, i don't know um, so we can't use more than one router for example if i i have the requirement so as you said like i have four application instance so when the okay. request is coming i want to use the one router but when i um, sending the response back to some outside so i want to use another router so it won't i mean it won't possible right uh, in a sense you know that you are changing the load balancer concept i would say so so you know right uh, uh, i'm i'm sure you must be aware of http right http is a stateless protocol I, I'm, I'm sure you are aware of it mm -hmm. uh, so so someone has to manage your session let's say that the moment you log into your google account uh, a session id created for you say you know with with your authentication information uh, the moment you log into google uh, a j session id will be transferred from your client to server and because it's tp status status protocol this j session id always travels between client and server so when it is traveling to router router manages this some kind of session information of you to say that hey this is where your request is going and to answer your question which mm -hmm. an application is always mapped to one router in respect of number of instances okay any any questions on this particular one ah uh, no i'm good now thank you so uh, if like the way i told you uh, you can do things not only from the pivotal web service you know uh, web client you can also do from the command line like if you are uh, familiar with the unix or uh, you know if you are familiar with windows cmd prompt so what uh, pcf has done is pcf has given various command line utilities based on your operating system so if you go to tools So here, based on your operating system, you can select the command line. Let's say that I'm using Windows 64 bit. I can download and start using commands. Let me, let me try this. So it is it is asking what is my uh, so whatever we are doing through your web console if once you download it the command line utility will help you to do exactly the same operations 
what you can do on the pivotal web services by use, using command line utility. Let's say that my ID is three dot Predicting the predictions, but uh, you can do the same thing. Like you can do uh, once you log in into the yeah. uh, system, mm -hmm. like okay. you can do uh, all kind of uh, operations, whatever you can do through using your web console. Okay. Yeah. So, so this is a. Uh, you know, as I stated, there are three kinds of uh, cloud services available. One is infrastructure as a service. Second one is platform as a service. And third one is uh, software as a service. So if you're if you're familiar with uh, you know, Salesforce, it is the best example for software as a service. Uh, most of the times, a PCF will deal with infrastructure as a service as well as a platform as a service. Infrastructure as a service means we will provide only the baseline hardware infrastructure to the company. That is networking, storage, servers, virtualization. And then the client will decide what kind of OS they wanted to, uh, to be deployed on top of it. Some clients prefer Windows, some clients prefer uh, Unix. Then OS middleware, runtime data and application managed by the client or the company. When you say client or the company, it is you if you are working in a, in a company. If it is a platform as a service, we will provide runtime environments, which includes middleware, which includes operating systems, virtualization, server storage, and that sort. So this is a, a typical uh, movement from legacy world to uh, into cloud world. In, in the past, we used to manage everything. We used to manage our own networking. We used to manage the storage. We used to manage servers. Ex all these activities as an administrator. Once it is migrated to cloud, if you are, if you, let's say you you go to PCF or you go to uh, Amazon or you go to Azure, they simply give you. If you say that I need own infrastructure, they'll simply give you the virtualization uh, capability, servers and storage and network. And then they'll ask you what kind of OS you want. You want Linux, you want Windows, you want, uh, you know, uh, 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 HPU works, et cetera, so and so on and so forth. Then it is your responsibility to install the middleware. If you're an MQ guy, you could install middleware and then you take care of your application data and like that. When it comes to platform as a service, everything is managed by the cloud runtime the middleware OS visualization, and you will just take care of your application data. So once the environment is ready, once the platform is ready, you simply put your application on it and start using it. So PCF is most of the time you use as a platform as a service whenever we want it. And we then it gives us an environment to deploy our application, run our application. So down the line, we may not need administrators if at all we are using platform as a service because your middleware component, your database component, your operating system, all these being managed by a third party service. So client or the customer doesn't need about the OS administrators, doesn't need about worry about the database administrators or middleware administrators. All they need to worry is how to develop their application and how to migrate these applications from the development to production. If you if you, if you think companies like Salesforce are a service now are a pega, now they are coming with a software and service. What they are saying is, hey, you don't need to do anything. 
Everything is provided by us only. All you need to do is access my application, create your own workflows. We will take care of your application data. We will take care of everything. So Salesforce being a CRM application, it has seen a big hit in the market because you don't need to install anything. All you need to do is access the URL and do whatever you want. So this is the difference between infrastructure as a service to a platform as a service to a software as a service. Now, if you see the market is trending towards software as a service, they wanted to build applications which can easily customize so that you don't need to spend too much time in your development and testing activities, or you don't need to uh, install anything on your uh, on your boxes. So the best example is ServiceNow or, or Salesforce. So we'll just quickly uh, go through the PCF architecture. So this is the typical architecture of the PCF. We will get into details. So if you see, uh, the reason probably one more thing will help you. So the Diago cell uh, here, it is called the brain of your uh, PCF. Diago cell uh, tells you uh, Diago is uh, the brain of your you know, PCF uh, architecture, which will tell you which container is currently less utilized. So it, it works on auction mechanism. When I say auction mechanism, when a request comes to Diago, Diago will decide uh, from the router when the request comes to Diago, Diago will tell you which container of your application is currently less utilized. And Diago's responsibility is to give your request to that container so that that container utilization will go up when compared to other, other containers that are available. So we will get into the architecture of PCF as well down the line, I know when we are slowly moving into the system. The other beauty of uh, PCF is PCF is built on, I know, uh, platform agnostic. That means today you are you are using PCF. The way PCF operation operated, the, the way PCF is managing your applications is you can easily migrate from let's say from PCF to today you are using PCF as an infrastructure service and also PCF as a platform as a service. Tomorrow we decided that, hey, I don't need, uh, I don't want to use uh, PCF as an infrastructure as a service. I wanted to use Amazon as an infrastructure as a service. So you don't need to worry anything. All you need to do is install on AWS the PCF architecture, or the PCF platform as a service migrate your application as is. Similarly, if you decide tomorrow that I, do, I wanted to use Microsoft Azure as an infrastructure service, you don't need to worry about migration. PCF provides that easy compatibility migration from, uh, from PCF infrastructure service to Azure as an infrastructure service. So the, the way PCF built is the migration from one infrastructure to other infrastructure is seamless. All you need to do is uh, in the target infrastructure install your pcf as a platform as a service and then migrate your applications as this in no time that's the beauty of pcf whereas in aws or in azure it is tightly coupled with infrastructure service whereas in pcf infrastructure as a service is loosely coupled compared to other you know other service providers okay so any questions we spent around 40 minutes uh, any questions on the topics that we're going to cover or uh, do you have anything that is running your mind? Yeah, so uh, for example, um, so I want to use that PCF as a uh, um, platform as a service and the infrastructure as a service as Azure. So I need to right. pay two uh, money to two vendors, right? Uh, Microsoft yeah, as to, well as. Yeah, you, you have to take Microsoft. If you see here, we can use VMware, OpenStack, Amazon, Google, or Windows. Any of these could be our infrastructure service. On top of it, we are installing PCF as a platform as a service. 
So the problem with this kind of architecture, uh, let's say that you're going with Azure as infrastructure as a service and uh, PCF as a platform as a service, you need to deal with two vendors. Sometimes if there is a problem with, uh, in, uh, with infrastructure, your platform may not work as expected. Similarly, if there is a problem with your platform as a service, your infrastructure is not responding, then you know it is difficult for you to identify where exactly the problem is currently lacking. Okay. But uh, the service, the support factor is available for both platform as a service as well as infrastructure service. Uh, with the with the latest uh, support agreements that PCF got into Azure or Google or Amazon, most of the infrastructure related issues we are able to close it uh, with a no time. Okay. okay. It, it is up to your enterprise uh, which infrastructure as a service they are planning to use it. Mm -hmm. And then after that, being an administrator, we install PCF and then we start working on it. Okay. So treat treat PCF uh, a platform as a service as an operating system that you are installing on your uh, infrastructure service, be it uh, be it an Amazon, be it Google, or be it Windows. It's it's just like one more layer that you are installing on your infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. Um. I don't have any question. Yeah. So P uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry is a predominantly an open source platform uh, it is uh, it is kind of uh, set it up uh, by two or three companies together and they set up this uh, open private cloud foundry but they do have a commercial license that people are you know the support system will come into the picture only with the commercial license so if you, have, if you see the another uh, web console whatever you're using is the trial one we will use the same thing for our uh, you know for our classes as well but you can do uh, all the activities that uh, that you can perform in a real time by using this trial version as well. You can uh, you can integrate services like Red Ace or IBM uh, uh, Rabbit MQ uh, MQ middle you know messaging service uh, to to your trial account. Uh, you don't see any kind of uh, problems with those things. Okay. So it, it's as good as a real uh, real time uh, no licensed version for you. Uh, the trial version is capable of uh, providing all the uh, features and support for you. Okay. Uh, so that's all I have. Uh, uh, in case you have more questions, we can uh, we can do it. Otherwise, I think we're good to close. Yeah, uh, I'm good. I don't have any questions. Okay. So, uh, uh, so in your current organization, are they using as a platform as a service, a PCF, or are you using infrastructure as a service? So we have two foundations. One is like on-premises. So as a PCF, we are using uh, our own infrastructure, like uh, like Linux servers. On top of it, they are installing the PCF. And another foundation is uh, PCF on Azure. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, but so then they are using Azure as a infrastructure. Yeah, is it so is public cloud or uh, uh, Azure, one? Azure one, I think this is a health, uh, I mean, healthcare, uh, healthcare okay. service. So they are using that uh, private one. So they don't want to expose the service to outside world. Okay. So when you say on premise, uh, you have an access to the data center because it is most of the time on premise is uh, where you know you install everything in the data center. Right? So you have an access to data center. Uh, uh, the the instance is what it is there. Yeah, so we have separate team to maintain that, um, but it's a private cloud. Okay, so yeah, everything is in your control. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's all. Uh, probably you can connect with Vasu on the further steps. Uh, yeah, okay, if you sure. have any questions, if you don't have questions, we can. Yeah, okay, sure. I'm good. Thanks for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you.